But this is pretty cool. This is one heck of a ride. KW makes the perfect suspension for every demand. Find them in the description below. Yes, what's up people? The Formula One hot rod is ready to go on the ground. Actually, I'm really excited about that because the tubular steel space frame that I've been creating is now, I would say 95% there. We need to get it on the ground so we have more room to finish some welds that you can't get to or access here. It's gonna be some tabs and things like that. But really today, myself and Blaine, who's gonna help me, have to magically get this thing on the ground safely. Which, yeah, you could quote Archimedes if I was a super nerd. Uh, but I'm not going to do that, even though I inference that. Uh, so it's a fun day in the shop. I got my cool shirt I bought after racing last a couple years ago at Road America uh, with Genius Garage. And here you can see is my Lamborghini Gigliardo. And I think I'm going to call it that because I think it's stupid if we're deciding whether to call it Gallardo or Gallardo. Um, so let's just time lapse this thing and get the F1 hot rod on the ground. <laughs>
Guys, it is on the ground. And the thing that makes me most excited about it being down here is this is the moment when it actually becomes a thing. It actually becomes a car. And when it sits on the ground, that's when you get the first feeling. The first part of the soul of the new car comes out, or at least that's the way I feel as its creator. And then pushing it outside, that was even a whole nother thing. When I looked at it, walked around with the camera, I was just like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And it's also inspirational because if you wanna walk around just a little bit, I'll push it forward here. Uh, the other thing is this thing looks amazing just as is. So I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, if I got an IndyCar roller, even if I didn't have side pods or the wings, it would be amazing just to put the nose cone on, forget the aero, build yourself some aluminum panels back here, and just put them in the sheet metal brake, follow the panels and such off of here, uh, and uh, maybe even finish this off with a partial canopy, a clear. In any case, it's a really neat toy, should be really great for just hooning around, track days, etc. and it just feels good. It just feels good to see it. It's not done, but down. And even with, if you come back here and look, and I realize I've got to redo the flanges a little bit on the CVs on the inner, but you know, just getting it so that the actual drive shafts of the IndyCar, the original ones with the CVs bolt up, with an adapter, nicely done by the way, to this C, you know, to this uh, differential, it's limited slip differential, I came from Taylor Engineering, and the drive and all the drive for the chain to the engine matches up perfectly. Uh, and it's just, it's just very rewarding to know and look at this, that if I need to remove the engine, on this side, you guys remember, I made that one tube removable, it's still structural, some very special bosses here that allow this tube to be removable. And you want to give the car a little bit of support because it flex, but then you can remove the engine. So not only do I think I'm a happy because this is a very solid, worthwhile, cool, just spaceship of a car, it's also serviceable. So that makes me excited. Uh, I will be honest, I, um, this is gratifying to do and I'm looking forward to finishing this, but I'm going to have to take a break for a minute from building cars because I am I am tired. And you know, inspiration only takes you so far. It requires the work ethic and the determination to, to see it through. Um, and frankly, all this stuff is just eating up my bandwidth and also doing YouTube and whatnot. So I'm gonna find a nice balance. They're gonna play with some of my street cars, obviously. Um, and then when this is finished here in the next few weeks, uh, I'll be getting the King Zero back in here. And also you guys, the Jabberwock chassis, or at least the basic rough part of the chassis is coming back this week. So coming up soon, the Jabberwock will be back here and get underway. The chassis will get its triangulation, it'll get its suspension on, become a roller. We'll start looking at mounting the body and of course, fitting the mighty Viper V10 engine mated with a twin disc clutch to the Porsche six-speed twin turbo transaxle. So I'm pretty excited about that. But I just, I think it's a neat moment just to kind of behold. Uh, I'm gonna jump in this thing here. Why don't you come over to the front? Camera person, please. Thank you. Oh, there's a bunch of junk in here. I feel like Yoda. Oh, mine or help you, I will not. Yeah. I better not lose that stuff. Okay. Now the 1990 Lola, uh, which this is, and I'm not using both hands because I'm trying not to screw this mic, is a tight car. It's a lot tighter than a later Raynard's. So you did have to be kind of small, at least really skinny. And I'm at the uh, extreme. What the heck is in my way? There's no way I could possibly drive it with these um, doggone, what do you call them? Uh, shoes on, I couldn't do it with these shoes. And honestly, if this was back in 1990 and I was gonna race Indy cars, I don't think I could run this chassis. I'm a little big, I'm a little too leggy. So, so if I did this though, it kind of shoves me up here, but I got my shins in a bulkhead because I'm, unfortunately I'm pretty tall. There's no way you could get Ed Bolling in it. He's way too tall for this, but this is pretty cool. This is one heck of a ride. So yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Well, that's a big step. You guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Obviously did a time lapse and just kind of show it off. We'll be coming back for more. Uh, when you subscribe, please make sure to click the bell. It's very important for anybody. Uh, YouTube's kind of funny and doesn't show stuff. And actually the algorithm has been on drugs since June. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on that all the car YouTubers have seen. So um, regardless whether it's me or anybody else, uh, make sure you support your favorite YouTubers by actually searching for their stuff and going to look at it because uh, we don't know what is going on with YouTube lately. So that's about it, guys. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. and Hope you're enjoying the build. Well, a huge thank you to Crush Proof Tubing Company. Since 1949 in Macomb, Ohio, they've been manufacturing custom rubber and plastic tubes for every industry imaginable. No tooling or mold costs, fast and free custom samples, and American-made quality is what sets them apart. 
But for me, I'm most excited about their exhaust evacuation kit. Different modular pieces and their convoluted custom hoses make it so that I can adapt any car, truck, or motorcycle with an internal combustion engine to get those exhaust gases out of my shop so I can keep working in safety and comfort. But beyond just that, they build a variety of hoses for a custom OEM world. You'll see stretchable drain tubing and bellows, as well as agriculture, medical, and military. So again, guys, Crush Proof Tubing Company, crushproof.com, and go down in the description below to see where to get your free samples for industry or your exhaust tubing.